If you guys are looking for the cheapest coins on the internet right now, make sure to check out my brand new sponsor, MMO EXP. They have the cheapest coins that you can find anywhere on the internet. Use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today, I'm going to be going over the top 10 base elites that I'm looking forward to in Madden 21. Now, guys, I'm going to start off with offensive for today's video, and then I'll probably do defensive tomorrow, whether or not there's no content. So I was going to put them together, but it's just so hard when there's like 50 to 100 base elites to pick 10 offense and defense, which means five and five, right? Just about if I'm gonna keep it even. So I decided to do offensive and tomorrow I will do defensive more than likely. Now guys, base leads in the beginning of Madden are so crucial. To people playing right now, base leads are literally gone with the wind, forgotten about, but week, the first weeks of Madden, those base leads are, no, first few months, base leads are valuable, first months per se. But when they're at their all time peak is the first like two weeks, base leads are God cards. Like you pull, a base lead 86 overall 87 88 and you're looking you're looking good you pull anything above an 85 and that's a good pack opening like it's really crucial you get Jalen Ramsey out of your first pack opening and you're and you're locked you're locked down for a bit last year not basically but pretty much basically it was a base legend Marcus Allen I believe 80 87 to 89 somewhere between there base legend which is pretty much a base lead but legend form he was the glitchiest card for the first month of Madden actually couldn't be stopped destroyed weekend league Mahomes, base elite Mahomes, great quarterback. A lot of great things came from last year's base elite. So I'm super excited to go over today's. I'm gonna go over the ones that really, I think will just make a difference in the first few weeks of Madden that you need these guys in your team. Now guys, they're not always gonna be the best overall cards. I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of them I have on here aren't gonna be the best overall. Some will, some won't. When it comes to wide receivers, my in my personal opinion, don't kill me. Wide receivers, the best rated ones aren't always the best ones. This year, Hopkins was the best overall rated wide receiver. He was not the one you wanted on your team the first few weeks. I had him because he was nap, but trust me, that was not the one you wanted. So starting off at number 10 on my list is a guy that honestly, you guys probably going to think it sounds stupid to have him on here, but I think this is so important in the first weeks of Madden. Zach Martin. Zach Martin is going to be probably the best right guard to start the year, or one of the best right guards. And I think it's so important to have a good right guard to start the year now. Well, you might say left tackle, right tackle, right? We're in a run-heavy meta. Next year might be run-heavy again. And if that is the case, right guard's just so important for getting those inside zone runs. I love single back dives. I love inside zone runs. I love inside runs. So I love being able to just navigate holes inside, and Zach Martin will make those for you. So I always think it's important to get your left guard, right guard, and center short up. And now, if you're going to do stretches, or you're going to be a heavy passer, get your tackle short up. But I think it's important to have a strong core in the line because otherwise you're gonna be getting beat everywhere. So I think Zach Martin's going to be a great base lead to start the year off. And number nine, now guys, any other any other year, you know, this year, I would have put this guy probably first. I'm having a number nine. Now there's just two quarterbacks I'm more excited for for the purposes of Madden. Early in the year, guys, you know, players aren't crazy fast. You're gonna it's gonna it's gonna be fun to play with a guy like Mahomes, but he's not gonna get a skate bar to start the year. He probably won't get many good abilities anyways. Most of the base leads didn't get great abilities. So he won't have any like escape artists, he won't be able to run. He'll be a good passer, but if Mahomes can't run, he's no better than a Tom Brady, right? So why pay the extra price of Mahomes when you could probably get a Tom Brady now? He will have a better throw power than Brady, which is for sure. But 87 throw power still has none to write home about. So Mahomes is going to be great, but I don't think he's going to be one of the top two quarterbacks that I have on this list for Madden purposes. Now, I'm going to be so, so excited though. Yeah, like if you get Mahomes now, rock with him, obviously. That's the point of this video. Any one of these top 10 are going to be glitchy. Next guy's Darren Waller. Now, here's the thing. Wallers didn't get a base lead, I believe, this last year. So we're going to have to go off of a card here. Let's go with... He'll probably get like an 80 to 81 overall base lead tight end, in my opinion. So let's go somewhere off of this team of the week. Based on this team of the week, if he gets a 80... Like, let's say even an 80 overall 81. He'll probably have an 83 to 80... I would say, let's go with 83 speed. Probably get like an 83, maybe 84 speed at tight end. Guys, that would be the fastest tight end probably in the game. Now, Evan Engram is there too. So I'm going to do this like a half position. Waller slash Engram. I don't know if Evan Engram will get another base lead. He's been getting them and he doesn't really perform too much in real life because he's, he's always hurt. So he might knock him down to a gold. So just in case, I'm going to put both of them as a slash. Which everyone's fastest is the one you want to go with. Because guys, tight end speed in that, at that point in Madden is crazy glitchy. Now the reason for that is they're going to be on linemen. I mean, linebackers. They're going to either be open, free, if you're blitzing. And you don't man up to tight end. They're going to be on a linebacker who at that point in the year might only have like an 80 to 80 speed, 80 to like 77 speed, depending on which one you get, or in a safety, which might only have an 83 speed. And the way the, the way coverages work with safeties at that point, man, it's not going to work. So I'm telling you, they just break the field wide open over the middle, considering what people are watching at that point in the year, especially when you're running the ball. Next, guys, this is going to be your more regular style tight end if you're not going to go the Waller route. That's just George Kittle basically going to be solid. 
going to be fast, right? At that point, the, like his, his, car, his card looks bad, but that's because Kittle's an all-around tight end. It's kind of like NBA 2K, guys, if you guys play my career. When you build an all-around build, your card, at, like your, your player at a 90 looks like, he looks bad, right? He can't really shoot, he can't really do anything, but as he gets to a 90 overall, he's really great because he's balanced. So, I mean, high 90. So right here, it's kind of like Kittle, right? He's not going to be the fastest, not going to be the best catcher, not going to be the best route runner. And his run block's good. But when you look at it, in reality, he's the only tight end that can catch. Decently route run at that point in the year. Decently run and run block. So he's kind of like the jack of all trade tight end. You really can't go wrong with him. Now, guys, this one right here is one I'm super excited for. Again, going to be a dual wide receiver here, depending on who gets what card. So in my opinion, DJ Shark is going to be one of the best base elite uh, wide receivers if he gets an early basically card so based on this card again he won't get that speed. he's super fast in real life and he's six foot four so remember that but he's not gonna get that speed he'll probably get like an 80 to 82 overall basically he'll probably end up with like an 85 to 87 oh let's go with 85 85 to 86 speed but again at that point at, at that point in the year 86 speed is really really good considering i'll probably be only seconds like tyree kill at wide receiver so if dj shark gets a card he's gonna be super tall six foot four with that speed he's kind of like a baby randy moss and then remember, if he does not get the card, then we go with the other guy who I think will get the card. Whoever's faster again. But the thing is that DJ Chark's obviously taller. So you definitely want to be waiting for him. But if not, you got DJ Moore. Again, he will not get a card that good. I would love to see if he had a base. I'm pretty sure he, had, he did have a base lead. But he will not get a card that good. But the thing is, he will get... He's 5'11". He'll probably get like an 80 to 81. And if we're lucky, he gets like an 86 speed as well. So whichever one's faster, and if they're the same speed, I recommend you go Chark, because Chark's obviously a lot taller. And I'm actually, I really do like Chark in real life. And he probably will get a decent amount of upgrades next year. Now, guys, next, the guy that you always got to have, no matter what, regardless, you go Tyreek Hill, basically. He's going to be like 150K off the rip. He can't catch. He's not great at route running. By the end of the day, and honestly, it's not horrible considering what they usually give him. By the end of the day, he's the fastest guy in the field. At that point in the year, guys, Tyreek Hill's crazy. You get a kick return. It's going to be a touchdown. Not like going to score every single play. It'll be like one every seven to eight kick returns. But still, it's a pretty good ratio now with Madden. You throw him a slant. He can easily run, the, um, you know, reverse the whole field, go across it, and beat people around the edges. He will burn people. This tire kill is super fun in the beginning of the year. Literally, he's on everyone's team. If you have the coins for it, you got to have him. Next, coming in at, at four, is going to be a running back that I'm actually pretty excited for. Now, it all depends on how they do him with the speed. But Derrick Henry is going to be one of the best basically running backs just off of just off of name brand alone he's gonna have a good price just so you guys know but let's go off this flashback let's say he'll probably have a car i'm thinking he's gonna have an 86 overall he'll probably have like right around here probably like an 84 to 85 speed with probably like an 85 to 86 trucking good carrying and good break tackle he's not gonna be the most agile he's not gonna be the fast running back but he should be up there because i think he'll have one of the highest running back overalls but he's gonna be power decent enough speed Great height, great frame, good strength, good break tackle. Going to be like an all-around running back. So I think Derrick Henry could be a super early contributor in the run game. I mean, if we get a guy like Mark Sound again, screw Derrick Henry. But again, we don't know. Kyler Murray is a guy that I'm really, really excited for. I feel like this is, I think he'll probably get a low 80 base league card that I think will have like an 84, 84 speed if, I'm, if we're lucky, 84 to 85 speed. Going to have decent throwing, nothing too special, probably bad throwing, decent throw power, but if he can get a skate artist, if he can get a skate artist early on his card, it's going to be glitchy. A good run game. You have Derrick Henry and you're running back and you're able to just sprint around with Kyler Murray. I'm telling you, a skate artist early in the year was super glitchy last year. It got better as the year went on. Obviously, the cards got faster, defenses got faster. But at that point in the year, if you had a skate artist, you could literally run around people because they don't, no one was fast enough. Like, no one. And even to this day, it's already glitchy. So. Kyler Murray is going to be one of my favorite cards for next year. I think going to be one of the longer term players on my team, unless I go with another guy who you will be seeing pretty soon. Next, we have Saquon Barkley. I think Saquon Barkley will get a very similar card. He was hurt a lot last season. He will one big injury, but it lasted quite a while. I think we'll get a similar card. I think he might get like an 84 this year, probably on the same overall. I mean, if Madden does him right, he should be like a top three running back, but they'll probably give him like an 84 overall. I think again, though, his speed will probably be like an 84, 85, think an 85, and his break tackle should be around an 86. He's going to have great agility, great carrying, great break tackle, great speed, great excel, and good strength for a basically running back 72. So Saquon's going to be one of those most well-rounded backs. Now, he's not going to be the best overall, but that's what you guys, you know, you have to understand with Madden. The best overall isn't always the best player. DeAndre Hopkins was one of the best overall cards last year, one of the most rarely used cards in the game all year. 
and that's just because his, his stats don't match up. He's a contested catch. Like, the way they make him a Madden is a contested catch jump ball receiver. In real life, he's actually he's a really great route runner, and he's actually pretty fast, but they make him contested catches. And in a month, contested catches don't really work too well. Franchise, they do. Not here. So I think Saquon, again, might not be the highest overall, but he should have one of the best speed power combos. Up there with Derrick Henry. Now, guys, number one. Guys, as long as EA doesn't screw this card because everyone's getting him as a pre-order bonus, which is going to be crazy, Lamar Jackson base lead is going to be wild. Literally, guys, wild. Now, he didn't have a base lead here, so it's going to be really hard to go off of this. He did get a team of the week at some point, but that was 90 overall. But let's go off of this, right? So he started with an 85 speed and a 76 gold. His base lead card should have like an 88 to 89 speed. Unless Madden wants to kill it a little bit because they know he's going to be glitchy. Should have like an 88 to 89 speed. So he's gonna be he's gonna be super fast. He's gonna be one of the fastest guys in the field. Because remember, 88 to 89 speed gonna be super fast. Should have like an 80, I believe an 86 to an 88 overall quarterback rating. He is the cover of Madden. So like last year, Mahomes, I think, was like tied for best overall. Oh no, second one behind Brady, and he was the cover. I think Lamar should get like an 87 to 86 overall card. Should have close to a 90 speed, 88 to 89, 90, somewhere between there. And if he gets a skate artist and they let him get it early in the year, unless they change the parameters for it, he's going to dominate. He's not going to have the best passing. He's going to have decent passing, just like Kyler, but he's going to be faster and he's going to dominate. Him and Kyler are going to dominate next year's Madden. I really hope that they let him get a skate artist early on. It would be super fun to rock weekend league with him. But guys, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, go down below, hit that subscribe button, guys. We're closing in on Madden 21, slowly but surely. Gonna keep getting videos out like this to try to, you know, get some time going. But that's about it. Hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to comment down below what you guys think. Who would the basically jerk excited for? Offensively, of course. I'm out. Peace.